ladies and gentlemen, we are delighted to welcome Oliver Velez, inaugural keynote speaker of the first Traders Expo, international best-selling author, world-renowned trader, advisor, and entrepreneur is back at the show after a seven-year hiatus representing a rare opportunity to meet one of the most sought-after speakers and teachers on the subject of trading the financial markets for a living. In 1999, Dow Jones dubbed him the Messiah of Trading. Oliver, thanks so much for joining us again. Thank you for having me once again. You're welcome. The floor is yours. Okay, fantastic. Welcome, traders. Welcome once again to another presentation uh, gifted to you by The Money Show. I'm very honored to be here. I've been participating with The Money Show for decades now, and it's always an honor to come back and deliver valuable content to the many followers of The Money Show, as well as the followers of, um, of me in my organization as well. Yesterday, I talked about how I believe that we are in a year that is mimicking 2000, the year 2000. So my talk yesterday dealt with why I believe that the year 2020 is actually a repeat of the year 2000. And if you missed that presentation, I strongly encourage that you watch that presentation whenever you can because that presentation, in a, in a very real sense, leads into my presentation today. Now, if you understand history and know what happened in, in the markets um, all the way back in 2000 when we experienced the dot-com bubble, you know what happened after the dot-com bubble. Well, if I believe that we are relatively close to a similar scenario, then, of course, I'm going to talk to you about how to profit from a move to the downside should I be right? Should my theory that we're actually repeating the year 2000, which will ultimately lead to fairly severe drops in certain sectors throughout the market, if I'm correct, you want to be prepared for that potential opportunity and you want to know how to do it right and you want to know how to do it professionally. And that's what I'll be talking to you about today. Now, before I actually get started with the presentation, um, I will have to assume that there will be people throughout the months and the years that see this presentation and in, in, in the future may not know who I am. So for those of you who do, please bear with me as I breeze through my, my brief history here. Guys, I've been in this industry for a very long time, and many people regard me as one of the pioneers to the active trading space, the modern day active trading space, I should say. I placed my first trade in 1981. That's probably a lot sooner or, or much earlier than many of you were born. Um, I became a professional on December 6th of 1986, working for a large firm on Wall Street. And after about eight years of a successful career in that regard, I decided to take a bold step and form my own company, a company that catered its services to the Wall Street firms that I had pro uh, previously worked for it was a scary move, but it turned out to be one of the best moves of my life. Over a 12-year period, I grew this company called Pristine into an international powerhouse with millions of followers and clients throughout the world. Throughout those years, I became known as the father of swing trading, and I'll talk to you about that a little bit as we move throughout the presentation. A lot of people aren't aware of the fact that I was responsible for coining the term back in 1992, swing trading. And I was um, such a huge proponent of this so-called brand new style of market play that many people began to call me the father of swing trading. And if you Google Oliver Velez and swing trading together, you'll see some really interesting historical uh, events and material, me really promoting the style of swing trading um, many, many years ago, several decades ago. Uh, in 1998, Barron's ranked me and my organization number one in the entire United States for training professional traders. And this was an extraordinarily huge honor for me at the time. Dow Jones uh, would follow up the next year calling me or dubbing me the Messiah of trading. And uh, that same year, I was chosen to be the this industry's first inaugural keynote speaker to represent the entire uh, active trading industry. I followed up with the same honor in the year 2000 and again this year in 2020, actually. 
I am the author of five international best-selling books on the topic of trading the markets for a living. These five books are written in five different languages, English, Spanish, um, Japanese, Mandarin, and German. And these five books continue today to be the largest selling um, trading books on the market. Thank you very much. Uh, today, I run one of the largest trading organizations uh, in the industry, if not the world. I have over 10,000 traders under my tutelage, under my mentorship, many of whom actually trade my own personal capital. Those, those traders span over 92 different countries throughout the world. I continue to advise and speak for financial organizations all over the world. And that's largely who I am very quickly. Um, this is an, an article written about me being the inaugural keynote speaker back in 1999. And in that circle, you'll see where I'm, I'm, I'm dubbed or, or, or named as one of the top traders in the United States. This is the article in Barron's in, uh, I believe, 1998 that ranked me and my organization number one, the number one source to go to if you're really looking for professional style training and education in the, in the professional trading space. This is a, an image of a variety of my books in all of the different, all of the different languages. And of course, um, amazon.com, uh, you can find all of those copies if you'd be interested. And this slide basically shows where I'd love for you to follow me, in particular on Instagram and my YouTube channel. I spend any, any nor a huge amount of time, traders, putting together content every single day that's absolutely free that I believe um, will help you raise your level of market sophistication in the market. So Oliver Velez Trading is my main YouTube channel. I believe it's one of the hottest, one of the most valuable trading uh, sources in industry today. So I strongly encourage that you follow me there. And of course, on a day-to-day -day basis, I'm constantly keeping you informed, touching base with you on a more personal level through my Instagram channel. OL Velez 007. So please follow me wherever you can on my social media networks to have a closer uh, relationship with me if that's something that you so desire. So let's delve into uh, today's topic uh, now that I've gone over a tiny bit of my history. What are we going to need to actually play the markets to the short side? Now, I'm assuming that the vast majority of people watching me here understand that it's, we have the ability to not only make money when markets are rising, but we can make enormous amounts of money when markets are declining as well if we're properly prepared and know how to do so professionally. Now, what's really interesting to understand is that while the potential gains on the short side are theoretically not as huge as they are on the long side because they're limited in terms of price, Theoretically, so a $100 stock can only go as, as low as $100. And the odds of a stock, I mean, a $100 stock can only go as low as zero. And the odds of a stock going to zero is extraordinarily rare. So the, the potential gains, while limited, that limitation is somewhat offset by the fact that shorts tend to deliver your gains faster than they do on the long side, buy side. So while your gains are somewhat limited theoretically on the short side, your gains come faster and in many respects bigger on the short side, if you get it right, of course. So what are the things that we're going to need to short properly? First, we're going to need a candlestick chart, all right? I believe it's the easiest form of charting to follow to follow the footprints of money. That's all charts allow us to do, right? Each bar represents a footprint, institutional activity in the markets. Some footprints are small, some footprints are big, some footprints are green, some footprints are red, but we have to follow the money. And we follow the money by following the footprints of those who have money. And the biggest tranches of money in the market are obviously controlled by the institutions. We're not interested in following the, the, the money of our neighbors. And we're not interested in following the money flow of our relatives. We're interested in following the money flow of mutual funds and large hedge funds and pension funds and the like. Okay. And they, when they act in the markets, they leave behind 
big giant footprints. And as long as we're able to read those footprints properly, we can follow the money properly. And it's this money flow that actually is responsible for us making money. We're sort of like the little bird that jumps on, on, on the back of a, of a rhinoceros or something while the rhinoceros moves and, and, and walks to the pond or, or the nearby lake uh, for his time at the water. Right, we don't have to do the walking. All we have to do is jump on the backs or jump on the coattails of the money, and we use candlestick charts to sort of read that money flow more properly than other forms. Now, we need a twenty-period mo simple moving average overlaid on that chart as well, and then after we have a chart, the candlestick chart, and the twenty-period simple moving average overlaid on that chart, I'm going to teach you what I mean by my climactic concept. You'll have to understand how to read a climactic event or a climactic move because those climactic moves set up the juiciest, the most profitable shorting opportunity. And I believe that we're coming into a market environment where those climactic scenarios are going to proliferate, which means that the market will produce what I'm about to teach you, the scenario I'm about to teach you in large numbers. And that's when you know the opportunities are going to be great. Now, my will have to also understand the ride the wave concept as a secondary way of shorting. But the primary way that we're going to find our shorting opportunity is through this concept I call my climactic concept. Now, uh, here we are. <laughs> Let's see here. Let's talk about the climactic here. Here we are looking at a daily chart. Every bar represents a single day of trading. Obviously, the green bars represent the days on, in which the stock closed higher than its opening price. The red bars represent the days during in which the stock closed lower than its opening price for the day. Now, if you take a look, there's a 20-period simple moving average, which is designated by the blue flowing line on the chart, okay? What this moving average is simply doing is averaging the last 20 closing prices of CCL, which is Carnival Cruise Lines. Okay, now, I want you to note that there are two, there are several locations as it relates to this 20 period moving average. So let me, let me demonstrate that for you right now so that you understand. There is a location where we are near the 20 period moving average. There's a location where we are fairly decently below the 20 period moving average. And then there's a location where you are extremely high above the 20 period moving average. And it is this scenario that we're going to focus primarily on today. The climactic run up away from a stocks or any financial item for that matter is 20 period moving average. Now, it's not just a move away that creates the climactic scenario that I want you to intimately understand. It's the sudden, abrupt, violent, almost immediate run-up away from the 20-period moving average. This run-up is not gradual, traders. This run-up is not casual. This run-up doesn't take its time. This run-up is an explosive, multi-bar move that separates itself extraordinarily far away from its 20-period moving average, and it does it in a hurry. Now, what this climactic set scenario usually sets up is a sudden large amount of profit-taking, which causes the stock to collapse from this extraordinarily elevated position. Now, instead of you focusing on the hardest part of this game, like the numbers of a company, the earnings of the company, the product line, the, whether the, the management is sound, um, its future plans for moving into other areas of the business, no, 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 we don't need that. All we need is a 20-period moving average and to be able to read these sudden run-ups away from the 20-period moving average or the sudden run downs. That's a topic for another day. We're going to focus on the climactic runs away from the 20 period moving average. 
Now, I'm going to take you and put you into the mind of your typical investor or your typical market participant. I want you to imagine that you bought near the 20 period moving average in this area. I teach my traders that you want to buy, go into a stock near its 20 period moving average. So let's assume that you're one of mine and you've gone into CCL near the 20 period moving average. What do you think having gone in here and having experienced this type of move away from the 20 period moving average in a short period of time, what will your inkling be? What will you be itching to do, especially if you start to see that momentum to the upside slow? Your instinct is to sell, to lock your profits in, that your instinct is that this move is not normal. This is not going to stay this way. You're going to feel like, I don't want to lose this sudden gift of mine that's happened in a far shorter period of time than even I expected. Boom, boom, boom. You're going to start selling. As this stock starts dropping, more and more people that were in at earlier prices are going to join you selling. And all of a sudden, it's going to be a scenario, typically, like someone yells fire in a, in a crowded theater, and there's only one exit sign. And so everyone all at once starts running, trying to squeeze through this one small exit, causing the stock or the theater in this metaphor to collapse. Now, this is a scenario that typically can and will only happen from this climactic elevated position away from the 20 period moving average. But I need you to understand that this climactic move must happen in a hurry. It can't happen over time. It must be something extraordinarily. It must be beyond the statistical norm of the stock to create these itchy fingers on the part of market participants who are already in the play. Okay, so we're, we want to catch stocks on their climactic runs. Now, here's, here's the $64,000 question. Once you find a stock that has experienced this climactic run far away from its 20, when do you enter? When do you strike? Two ways we strike. We strike on the elimination of green. See this green here? On the elimination of green. So if a red bar breaks the green, boom, we're going to enter the stock. So the following day breaks the green. We enter on this day and our stop is above the pinnacle of the climactic run up. So we're shorting a little bit below that pinnacle, but our stop, our protection is above the pinnacle. And this is what I mean by the pinnacle, almost like uh, the steeple of a church. Boom. Okay. So we're going to get in short whenever the last green bar of the climactic run, run to the upside is removed by a red bar. We move, we play inside of the red bar. We just simply go into the red bar short. Our protective stop is above the steeple, okay? Now, as far as targets are concerned, there is a high statistical probability that your move will at the very least reach the 20 period moving average below. There might be some wrinkles along the way, but the odds are extraordinarily high that you do achieve the 20 period moving average, if not more, okay? So that's a very general target to go after, the below 20 period moving average. Let's move on to another example here. If we take a look at, Amer this is American Express, look at the climactic run up. A lot of these, a lot of these stocks, the market as, as a whole had this climactic run up in the beginning of June here. And as you can see, it's sudden, it's abrupt, it's violent, and it's far, away from the 20 period moving average. Now here, you can wait for a green bar right here to be eliminated. When is the green bar eliminated? Here and here, okay? You can wait for that 
or you can, in this case, dive into a sizable red bar. So if there is no green bar to the immediate left of you, and you have a fairly fat red bar, you can dive into the red bar, stop above the steeple. Don't ever forget your protective stop. Upside is theoretically unlimited. You must protect yourself for the small percentage of times you're going to be wrong. You're not going to be 100% right. There's nothing in life that's 100%, right? So we have to be smart and protect ourselves above that steeple. Do not let your stop break that steeple without you exiting. So there are two ways to enter. We're going to enter whenever the last green, the most recent green, is violated. Boom! Or boom! Stop above the steeple. Or we're going to jump inside of a fat red bar if there is no green bar to the immediate left with a stop above that fat red bar. Those are our two entry ways. Minimum or potential target, I should say, not minimum. Potential target, 20 period moving average. And look at the bounce off the 20 and the secondary drop. But that 20 is often a strong area of support. Okay, let's move on to the next example here. I want to I want to try to get through all of them. Here is here's an airline stock, uh, um, American Airlines. Look at the strong, sudden, abrupt multi bar move far away from your 20 period moving average. Now remember the scenario I told you. Here you get the red bar, but to the left there is no immediate green green bar to the left. The green bar is underneath the red bar. So we don't have a green bar to the left of it. So we're going to jump into this red bar, stop above the high of the red bar, or you can wait for the very next green bar to form here. And when any bar violates the green, boom, enter, stop above the steeple. This is the most important part of your strategy. It is how you protect yourself. You protect yourself first and you go for the gain secondly. I'm constantly reminding my traders, guys, your job is not to make money. Your job is to protect the money. The market's job, the stock's job is to make the money. URL's job is to drop to the 20 period moving average for you. You're, you can't do that. But what you can do it's in the game when the game is not working in your favor. See, the stock can't end the game. You can end the game. You can't make the money. Stock can make the money. This is a partnership, traders. You have your job. The stock has its job. And one of the key problems in this game on the part of a lot of novice traders who are untrained is that they get their jobs mixed up. They think their job is to find money. They think their job is to win. They think their job is to make money. No, that's the market's job. Your job is to not lose the money. Your job is to protect the money. Remember this, your number one goal, protect the money. Let the market do its own job in terms of making the money for you, okay? So under the green, boom, stop above the steeple, 20 period moving average goal, there you have it, more or less. Okay, let's go on to the next example. We've got Win, uh, a, a, a very popular stock for me. Um, we actually went into Win right off of the 20 period moving average. I can show you this. All right, so here is Win coming off that 20 period moving average. And here's the climactic run up away from the 20 period moving average. Now, we, I was expecting more of that, but it got very climactic there. So that climactic run, here's your green bar. When does green get eliminated? Boom! I love that now. All right, stop above the steeple, protect yourself, and take a look at this, traders. Here is your risk. Stop, entry. This is your risk unit. Look at your gain unit for the 20 period moving average. That's what keeps you in this business, the snowman effect, right? You want to play in a snowman effect. Here's a snowman. Here's his body, all right? You want your potential losses, the head, 
to be much smaller than the potential gains, the body of the snowman. Play the snowman effect, and you'll stay in this business forever. You want your losses to be the head. You want that body to be nice and fat. Not your body, the play's body. All right? Okay. Okay. Let's move on to the next. Uh, here we have Coca-Cola, sort of the same time here. Boom, climactic run far away from that 20. Got to love that. When does green get eliminated, elevated way up there in outer space? Pluto, this is like Pluto. Is Pluto a planet now? No, I think it's not a planet. Sometimes it's a planet. Sometimes it's not a planet. I get confused. But anyway, all right, so here's Pluto sitting out there in outer space, traders. All right, outer space, far away from the 20. Boom, put that stop above the steeple. Let's get ready to potentially take profits at that 20 period moving average. Look at our risk unit. This is the key to success in this game. Look at the head of your snowman. Look at the potential gain. There's your snowman effect. Boom, that's how you stay in this business forever, traders. All right, okay. Now, here is gold. Here's a, a, a gold index, GLD. Uh, one of the best gold indexes, by the way, that you can follow. Look at how we were rising, but not so climactically away from the 20. Now, this is something you do not want to try to risk shorting. Something that is sort of moving parallel with the 20. But look at how as we get really climactic away, that's where the opportunity comes from. Here's green. You're way up there in Pluto land, okay? When does, what bar breaks the green bar? This one, jump into that bar. You can do it right at the open if it's below that green bar, okay? But sometime during that day, get into that short right there. Your stop is above the steeple. Go for the 20 period moving average, and there you go. Guys, you can do this forever. I've been shorting this way based on this climactic concept since, I would say regularly since 1987. Well, no, I, no, that's not true. 1989, run up in 1989. From 1989, this has been reliable for decades, and it's based on human psychology. So it will never go away. This is a tactic that will never go away, traders. All right? Profit taking always takes place. Uh, do, 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 do. Why? Why didn't I? Okay, this is this is kind of weird, but um, let's go. Let's. I, I want to cover this. Here we have the spiders. Spiders is the ETF, the most popular ETF that that tracks the S and P five hundred, right? So check this out. Look at your climactic run away during that same period of time. Here, you're sort of in Pluto land there. When does green get eliminated right here? Boom! Stop above the steeple. That's your risk unit. 20 period moving average. Here's your snowman. Now, take a look at what um, sp the spiders is doing right now. You want to be really careful with this, right? This is not a short because you're, parallel, you're moving parallel with the 20. There is nothing climactic about that move. There is nothing excessive, nothing violent, nothing getting too far ahead of itself. Right? That's very different from this getting too far ahead of itself. This is railroad tracks. Be very careful shorting railroad track runs. We want to stay away from them on the short side. Okay? Now. Oliver? Yes. You have one minute. Okay. Thank you. Guys, I want to very quickly show you sector plays, right? Because the best way to find these opportunities is to actually follow sectors through ETFs. So look at this is the this is the oil sector or the energy sector ETF, EXLF. Now look at the climactic run that XLF as an index experienced, right? So check this out. Boom. Now, remember, we can jump into the red bar if there's no green bar to the left or wait for a green bar to get eliminated and jump in here. 
move to the 20 period moving average. But this sector being experiencing this must mean that there are many stocks in that oil sector, in that energy sector that must be experiencing the same thing. Because how could the index experience to be experiencing this if the stocks that make up the index are not experiencing it? Impossible. So look at all the other stocks. Look at JPM. I'm sorry, that's not an ind- that's a financial ETF. I'm sorry. Um, e- XLF is a financial index. ETF. I'm sorry. So here we have another financial stock, JP Morgan, climactic run right to the 2200 period moving average, jump into that red bar. Here you have WFC, another financial stock experiencing that climactic run right into uh, uh, in, in, in Pluto territory, drop to the 200. Let's follow another one very quickly. I've got just a couple seconds here. Here's another index. This is the energy index. Climactic run away from the 20 period moving average, which must mean that other energy stocks, oil stocks must be experiencing the same thing. So now I drill down to other oil stocks and see that rig has an, has an excessive run away from its 20 period moving average. And look at that collapse. Here I see OXY has a climactic run away from its 20 period moving average, creating a nice climactic short opportunity back to the 20. Here's Exxon, climactic run away from the 20 period moving average and the collapse all the way back. Here's um, SLB, another popular oil stock, climactic run away from the 20 period moving average only to collapse back toward the 20 period moving average. Another oil stock at ERX, away from the 20 period moving average and the subsequent collapse back to the 20 period moving average. XLE, the same thing, all right? And intraday opportunities abound with this concept as well. AMD today, climactic run up right into its overhead 200 period moving average, all right? Away from the 20 period moving average and the and the drop back toward the 20 period moving average. So all time frames are go, all right? A good portion of my shorts are intraday as well, but I certainly don't skip or mix or miss the larger plays on the daily time frame as well. So listen, guys, I want you to follow me. Let's do this together. I want us to watch Target. This is Target as of today. All right. We're moving into a climactic situation with Target. Let's watch this one together. It might take a few days. It might not take a few days, but we're certainly getting into a climactic scenario with Target. All right. So let's watch this together. Let's watch it over the next several days. Let's watch it over the next several weeks together. And let's see if this is one that pans out exactly how I've talked to you today. And if you're interested in trading with me, guys, listen, I want to start every single trader off with my capital, $50,000, we share the gains. I will teach you every single day of your life as long as you have my capital in your hands. We will split the gains. I will give you 60% of the gains. I will take 40% of the gains. I'm responsible for the losses. If you lose, it means that I haven't done my job. I take the losses. We split the gains. These programs cost $1,700, but one fee for the rest of your life and you're set, you will never have to put money in, it will be my capital. If you sign up um, in the next 48 hours, the price not only goes from $1,500, one fee for the rest of your life, I'll give it to you for $1,300. That's one losing trade traders. $50,000 trading account can grow to a $100,000 trading account, a quarter of a million dollar trading account. My traders trade my capital. I take 100% of the risk. This fee is to educate you for the rest of your life every single day. That has a value. A 33-year professional veteran, I could do this. We do this together. I want to thank you for joining me once again. If you missed the presentation yesterday, please make sure right here on moneyshow.com you catch that presentation whenever it's available. All right? Let's watch Target together, and let's take this journey together step by step. I'll be waiting for you. Thank you so much. Oliver, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Now, listen, Oliver, are you going to be available in your booth or your team if the people have want to continue a Q&A? Yes. Uh, I have my entire team waiting to answer your questions, waiting to um, uh, 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 
deal with anything you have. All right. So, okay. So uh, everybody, back. exactly. So uh, when I uh, close out this presentation, they can simply refresh their page and they'll be in your chat room to continue oh, this conversation. Thank, Thank you. you again, Oliver. Thank